Welcome back, folks. This begins part two. Well, I spent the morning getting everything stripped off of the frame and the chassis. Obviously, there's nothing up there except in the center. You can uh, see part of the brake lever sticking up here. Uh, I got to take that off too yet. But anywho, got it degreased, about ready to flip it over and start working on mounting the motors. I mentioned I have two 450-watt motors for this. Here's the shell. Here are the two 450 watt motors. Gear reduction, this output 420 RPM. We're running from a, a nine tooth sprocket to an 11 tooth sprocket on the axle with some number 40 chain. So it should be plenty strong enough and should bring it right down to about 5.2 mile an hour top speed. So that should be geared just about perfect for this engine, but we'll see how it works when it's all done. Well, I'm going to start working on flipping that over and figuring out how I can mount these motors. And when I come up with something, I'll bring you back in. Well, we've made it to the point where I'm down at the workbench working on motors. And these are the motors, or this is one of the motors for the locomotive. And you can see I have it tore apart. All of the windings inside there. You can see where the commutator is. Where the brushes on the back face of the motor, there are the brushes, transfer the power over into the windings on the armature. Now, I will be using a 4QD motor controller. There it is. And what these basically do is turn your supply voltage on and off incredibly fast uh, to the motor. And I mean incredibly fast. It's happening... I forget what I read, but it's happening thousands of times a second, depending on your, your speed. And so what that does, anytime you're switching a high current, this is rated for, uh, I believe, 25 amps, maybe. Well, the camera's not going to focus, but yeah, this motor is rated for 25 amps, so you're switching quite a bit of power. Anytime you're turning that much power on and off, and across a connection as you're switching on and off across the different poles here you can generate a lot of RFI what is RFI well RFI is radio frequency interference and it can wreak havoc on the MOSFETs which are the electrical components which are actually doing the switching inside of the motor controller and can shorten the life of this device. It's also not good for uh, interference with any other radio electronics you may be using or even the uh, amplifier there for the sound system or even the sound card itself. So it's important to add a capacitor to these motors uh, to make sure it suppresses that radio frequency interference. 4QD, one of the reasons why I chose this product over the dimension engineering ones, they do an amazing job on their website of explaining this concept and many of the other features and, and thought process and engineering that's gone into this controller. And uh, I'll link those videos down below. They did a heck of a good job explaining that. They have nice fancy oscilloscopes to uh, demonstrate the signal and how much noise this capacitor and adding these iron or technically a ferrite beads on the motor lead wires do to uh, suppress that noise. My oscilloscope there is from the 1950s. It's not going to... It works, but it doesn't pick up a uh, signal quite as well as... Those new fancy multi-thousand dollar digital ones. While I'm pointed over here too, the water pump just came out. There's my vacuum tube oscilloscope on just for the fun of it. There's no signal to go into it, so all you get is a dot. And while we're over here, uh, I also have the controller, handheld controller for it built. But that's a topic for a different video. So, if you're looking at building a locomotive, do check out 4QD's website for their informational videos, whether you're using their controller or not. This, I believe, is like a 10 nanofarad capacitor. I'm going to solder it in here in the back. You don't have to take a motor apart and put it in here. You could put it on terminals uh, as close to the motor as possible. But I'll add this in, and I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. 
The capacitor has been installed. You can see it tucked in there. It is below the height of the brushes, so it should not come in contact with uh, anything in the back of the motor there or the motor housing itself. So just got to throw this one back together, and if you know anything about brushed motors, these brushes are spring-loaded. You can see it just kind of all fell apart there. That uh, spring washer was holding it together. Well, you have to get all these brushes pushed back in uh, here on these brush holders uh, in order to fit the commutator down into that spot. So it's uh, really a pain in the butt to put a brush motor together, but it can be done. Now, if your brush holders have this little hole in the side of it there, you can push the brush all the way in, put a piece of little wire through it, do that on all four of them, then slide the uh, armature back down in there, once it's in place, pull those wires out, the brushes will spring forward and make contact with the commutator. I think I'll show you that there too. Um, you know, one of these days I probably ought to invest more in YouTube because I don't even have a tripod to hold the camera here, so it makes it hard to uh, show actually doing work and filming at the same time is kind of impossible. But we'll be back again. A bunch of shorts here put together. We'll try to make a video of it. Okay, so I got those brushes put back in their uh, uh, holders there, and I'm actually just using pieces of my old Radio Shack solder wire when Radio Shack was still in town. Miss those days, but anyhow, that uh, soldering iron wire is just holding those brushes and the spring tension back in those holders. We got our spring washer here as an installed in the correct location in the bottom of the motor. So with those brushes held back, all we have to do is just uh, set the armature down in there, make sure the bearing's centered and seated, I can feel the spring uh, pushing back against it, and set our motor casing back on top of it. Now as I'm looking around my messy workbench, where did I put it at? Uh, uh, too many places to put stuff and not organized enough. This motor housing has really strong magnets in it, and if I try to do this one-handed it will pull the armature up out um, and off to start over so we'll throw this back on and uh, put all the hardware back in it and this will be ready to go to mount underneath the locomotive all the chassis and uh, painted and ready to go so we should be assembling the underside of it and ready to put it on its wheels here uh, pretty soon at least in the next couple of days the underframe is done, finally. It's been a couple of weeks working on this, but I believe I got it put together. Through the test runs, it seems to run nice and smooth. Here's a little something you may not have known to this point. This is actually going to be a side rod engine. So, uh, therefore, with only having the brake being on the front axle only, it will still slow down the, uh, or have an effect on the second axle and wheel set as well. Tried to keep it simple as much as I could, uh, following the KISS method, keep it simple, stupid, but while also being well thought out. So we've got a set of pillow block bearings mounted on the axle. That's a three quarter inch, 1045 axle. The motors, if I work around here, have a face plate that's welded down to a piece of 3 16 plate that's bolted to the bottom of these pillow box fairings. Now what this does is that when the suspension is moving up and down, those springs are pretty stiff, but as the suspension moves up and down, the chain length never changes, so you won't have it skipping teeth when you're trying to climb up a hill. So it holds the motors down and in place. If we look down on the bottom, just below that motor housing here, you can see that there's a pin that goes through. Well, underneath that motor mounting plate, there's a clevis-shaped bracket. So when the suspension moves, it just slides in and out of, uh, or slides along that pin in that clevis bracket. So kept it pretty simple. And uh, also, if one of these motors goes bad, since they are a Chinese special, I tried to make this somewhat serviceable. So that pin can be removed uh, just a couple of steps there. The motor will then swing down if this is on a service bay and be accessible. And then I can rewire it 
to the terminal block here. The far side, those terminals will go up to the motor controller. The close side here is for the actual motor leads there. So should be a pretty good system. It runs smooth and quiet. Um, the side rods are, are on here loose. They're not fixed yet. They're just hanging in there for demonstration. So at this point, I can flip it over, get it up onto its wheels. Uh, I imagine I'll end part one here and we'll start part two with above the frame um, electrical work. I've got a, a little bit of a footprint layout for what's going to go where. And uh, I think I've decided I'm even going to add air brakes onto it too to run the, the train behind it, or at least the engineer's riding car. If I get brakes on that, that'll be, I'll have more braking power than what it can pull. In theory, we'll see how it actually does when we get to a track. But anywho, that's the underside all done. The brake is just a, a, a go-kart brake there. Mounted onto a bracket. Cable pull, the cable for it comes down along to the handle off the back side there. As I pull that handle, you can see that brake arm actuate and grab the caliper. Everything's uh, painted black down in here, so I get it's a little bit tricky to see. Um, Wanted to get that underside pain before I flipped it over onto its wheels. It's pretty heavy. I mean, it's, it's, I don't know if it's quite a hundred pounds, but if it's not, it's darn close. So, and that's without the batteries yet. The batteries are going to be another 120 plus the body is probably another 40 or 50. So, uh, by the time this is all said and done, we should be well on our way to 250, 250 pounds or so. And I, I hope that's the case because that'll give us the, best tractive effort having that extra weight or additional weight so thank you for following along i'm gonna end this one right here